So in this video, we're gonna look at the relationship between PCOS and DHEA. Now, typically we would expect to see a high DHEA in someone with PCOS, but it doesn't always turn out that way. So we're gonna talk about some of the relationships between DHEA and androgen levels to help you get a deeper understanding of what you might be seeing in some of your lab results. So if this interests you, if you're interested in things like PCOS and androgens, hormone levels, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like it. In a previous video, we looked at the role of sex hormone binding globulin in PCOS. We said it's typical for the sex hormone binding globulin to be low, which makes androgens more bioavailable. What happens is the low sex hormone binding globulin results in less of the androgens being bound up, making more of the androgens free, like free testosterone being high and other uh, androgens like dihydrotestosterone all being high. But not all cases of, of PCOS are accounted for by simply looking at the sex hormone binding globulin. Sometimes there's high, testo high total testosterone and high free testosterone. So we also have to, you know, look at their instances or, or what other mechanisms might be able to explain this. So indeed, some cases of PCOS, the high testosterone is thought to be coming from the adrenal glands. So androgens like testosterone and dihydrotestosterone can be produced from the adrenal glands. For females, a significant amount of their androgens do come from the adrenal glands naturally. The main precursor for these hormones to be produced in the adrenal glands is DHEA. And DHEA can be converted, readily converted into testosterone. So why would they be getting more androgen production from the adrenal glands all of a sudden? What, what accounts for one uh, female having higher androgen production and another one not? Well, there's not a definitive answer for this, but stress seems to be the most likely culprit. With stress, uh, you can have a direct activity on the pituitary gland. There's a feedback loop between the pituitary gland and the adrenals where the pituitary basically causes a hormone to be produced, which then stimulates the adrenals to produce other hormones like androgens. The hormone that the pituitary gland produces is called ACTH, and the stimulus, one of the stimuluses for ACTH to be produced is stress. So higher stress levels can cause uh, ACTH to be produced and then a corresponding increase in things like cortisol. But along with the cortisol, you can also get an increased production of androgens because ACTH, the hormone that comes from the pituitary, doesn't really differentiate which um, tissues it's stimulating to produce the hormones at the adrenal uh, level. So it's going to produce, it's going to stimulate production of cortisol and these androgens. So DHEA is a good way to measure your adrenal androgen output, but you have to make sure you're actually measuring the correct form that's going to give you the most accurate reading, and that's DHEA sulfate versus measuring D plain DHEA is going to give you an inconsistent result. So the uh, output uh, for the adrenal glands and producing androgens, the most accurate measurement is DHEA sulfate. It's also important to note that the reference ranges for DHEA sulfate sh should be age adjusted. So if you're looking at your reference range and it looks low or high, make sure you're looking at uh, the age related reference ranges. So with PCOS, we would expect to see high DHEA sulfate level and corresponding androgens like testosterone and DHT to also be high. Not always both, but at least one of them. So I've helped many women diagnosed with PCOS produce lower androgens, improve their metabolism, and get them ovulating again. So just because you've had this diagnosis in the past doesn't mean you'll always have it. So every time you're you know, measuring things, it doesn't mean you're going to get the outcome that you would expect from PCOS, especially if you are treating it and maybe making some improvements. So this may explain some of the inconsistent findings many women with PCOS find in their lab results. They're expecting to see, you know, a, a low sex hormone binding globulin or a high DHEA and that may not be there depending on where they're at in their progression. There's different forms of it too, so not all women are going to have high adrenal output. This may explain some of the inconsistent findings many women with PCOS have found. Like for instance, Jane asked the question, I have PCOS with low sex hormone binding globulin, but I also have low DHEA. 
are these two things related? So this video is my answer to her. And so for her, I would actually look at the actual levels of DHEA and make sure that it is DHEA sulfate that's being measured. Otherwise, you know, it's basically a throw out test. You need to have DHEA sulfate. And I would also make sure it's age adjusted. So is it low for your age or just low, or did they just give you a general uh, low? So the actual level here will matter. And also, what was it before? Was, was it high before and now it's low? And what's going on with your health and different things now versus before? Maybe there's some sort of improvement in your health or changes, a uh, different diet plan or different stress levels maybe that have changed your adrenal output. For instance, maybe she was under a lot of stress before and now she's not. And so she's not getting that cortisol uh, and ACTH stimulation to the adrenals and not as much uh, cortisol and corresponding androgen output from the adrenal glands. Or another idea or possibility is she was under a lot of stress for a long period of time and now her adrenal glands aren't able to put out as much uh, of the DHEA and corresponding adrenals. And in this case, we would expect her to be more tired as well. And this is referred to as adrenal fatigue. All these things can be, you know, verified through through labs. You know, for DHEA is low, I would also expect her corresponding androgen levels to be low, but maybe her free and free testosterone and, and maybe free DHT are actually high since the sex hormone binding globulin is actually low. Another idea possibility is that uh, she was recently pregnant and her over overall hormone production is decreased. So all these ideas would explain why someone with PCOS would have a low DHEA, but typically we would expect DHEA to be high, but make sure you're looking at the actual DHEA sulfate levels and the age adjusted levels of DHEA. And if your DHEA is low, I would expect your corresponding androgen levels to be low too unless you're supplementing with those androgens. Okay, so that's all I had to say about the relationship between PCOS and DHEA. If you have a question about uh, something related to PCOS or any other health-related issue, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that if uh, I think there's enough interest. And thank you again for watching. We will see you next time.